6.10 here, I've already filled out some of the notes, but we want to analyze the circuit that we're given here to determine the voltages at all nodes and the currents through all branches. We can assume that our beta is 100. The positive supply is going to be some value, and the negative supply is ground. We've talked about this previously in the video, link below the like button, 6.7. To solve this, we're going to use resistor voltage division, which is the entire left side right here. The only voltage divider, if the base current is so small, it'll be negligible when compared to the current flowing through the resistors. Because, you know, we're going to have a greater current flowing through here than a current flowing through here, or um, voltage. So the voltage here is going to be greater than the voltage through here, because it has to go through this resistor first. So when we rewrite this, we are going to use the Thevian's theorem. Think about it as looking from this point right here, which would be right here, and we have this circuit if we were to rewrite it because our RB1 and RB2 are in parallel with each other. So with this, we have our 15 source voltage, and then we have our resistor values. We solve this out. We're going to get 5 volts. We can also calculate the resistor across here, and the resistance across here is 33.3 kilo ohms. And then we can plug this in here. Now, we are going to want to solve for this. Um, I don't think I mentioned it here, but previously we've gone over where we have a certain like this where it looks like this and based on this diagram right here it's going to be a NPN and when it's an NPN we can see that the collector is on the top and the emitter is on the bottom so looking at this and we can even see it from the picture that we're given we have our RC here which is the collector and our RE here which is the emitter hence the VBE the base emission right there or base emitter um, and so if we want to find the emitter, we're going to have to find the current through this part, which is what this is. So we're going to come down here and we're going to do that. Now, the figure is basically the same. We're just rewriting it with some values in that we are going to find. So the first thing that we can find is the base, right? Our VBB. And that is because we have our IB and our RBB. It's going to be the values that we just found the 33.3 kilo ohms and then our voltage which is the 5 volts there or and I'm sorry and then the current and then that we don't which we don't know so we set this equation up because we know our VBB that's what I was trying to say we know our VBB as the 5 volts that we just found we don't know our IB we do know our RBB we know our VBE the V base um, and then we are going to have our IE times our RE so that's going to be everything that's flowing through that specific part. If we were to redraw it, it would look like this. So we have our voltage, the 5 volts. We have our IB, which we are going to find in a second. We don't know this right now. We have the resistor here. We know that from previous. We know our VBE is just going to be 0 0.7. And we've gone over that previously. So VBE, we can even put this in the notes. And if it's not there, I'm going to include it. VBE is equal to 0 0.7 for something that's like this. And then we are going to just substitute in our IB equation here. So we only have one unknown, which is IE. And then we solve for this, we get 1.29 milliamps. And that's for the current for the emitter. And then we can keep using the other equations that we have here once we have our emitter and solve for the other different values. Now, to get a stable bias point at beta as beta varies, it's usually good to set the bias current through the base bias resistors to be greater than our IB, 10 times or more. So it's not going to be too much affected. We can have our IB look like this, where we take the 1.9 and divide it by our beta, and it's going to give us this value right here. The base voltage is given by this. So it's going to be VBE plus IE times RE. And we can evaluate the collector as this. Um, this is also an equation that's in the notes link below the like button. The collector voltage can be now evaluated as the following once we plug in some values for our VC that we have. Uh, if it's not up here, it'll be in the notes as well. To get a symmetric output voltage swing, it's usually a good idea to bias VC about halfway between the base bias voltage, VB, and the positive power supply, which is VCC, which is what we're trying to do here. It follows that the collector is higher in potential than the base, which means the transistor is in our active mode, which we mentioned earlier, as had been assumed, and the results of the analysis are given here. So again, we would just find these values after we find the initial left part, 
we would plug it into the equations and then we would try to solve each of the nodes and the currents flowing through here. And that's how we would look at our 6.10, which is analyzing the circuit and determining the voltages at all nodes and currents through the branches.